why don't we take uh, everybody through a, a real world certifier test, Joe? That's a good idea, Daryl. Now we have the certifier has just been turned on. Now I could have turned on the backlight, but since this is a well lit room, we'll, we'll just uh, look at the screen without the backlight. Ask us if we want to test cables or uh, network ports or review printer memory. So let's uh, uh, test cables. Now our first choice here, do we want to do a real world certify or a basic cable test? Now the, our basic cable test, uh, we do everything everybody else does, split pairs, opens, shorts, but in addition we also do distance to split pairs. In other words, if there's a split pair in the cable, we can help you uh, find out where it is and uh, repair that uh, cable. Now when we go to real world certify, it does all of the basic cable tests plus it also tests uh, crosstalk and it tests the uh, cable type and allows us to predict the speed that the cable is going to run at. Uh -huh. So here we go, real world certify. It tells us to uncoil the cable. Now the tester can actually tell if the cable is co coiled or not because if it's coiled, there's more crosstalk and it uh, makes the uh, uh, cable category be a little less than it really is. You know, here's the, really the first big why in the road where we are different than the other guys, isn't it? Because how many cable installers use that last 20 feet as a coil stuffed in the wall, maybe with a tie wrap around it? We'll show you the difference in the performance of your cable if you use techniques like that. And it really makes you a better installer when you have a tool like this. Right. And, you know, coiling the cable is probably all right for a 100 megabit network. But when you get to the gigabit, uh, where performance is more critical. <laughs> now we're going to plug in the cable. It tells us to plug into the left port. And we press more of the, more of the test. Now it asks us if it's a patch cable or a solid cable. The solid uh, cables are the ones normally found in the wall and the patch cables are the ones that uh, uh, connect from the wall outlet to the equipment which may be a PC or, or a switch or a hub. And you had a nice way of figuring out whether you were dealing with a patch cable or not. Uh, with the magnifying glass, right? If you saw a stranded cable, it's a patch cable. Yeah, right, that's very nice about these connectors. You can just look at them, and uh, you can see the end of the wires. Yeah. I just use a little magnifying glass, and I can look at them and know right away. And also, you can pretty much tell by, by how, how flexible oh, so the wire flexible, is. So it is a patch cable if it's flexible. All right. So now we tell it's the patch cable and it begins the test. First it uh, tests for split pairs, then it tests the next, which is near-end crosstalk, mm -hmm. then it tests the effects, which is the far-end crosstalk, and uh, we do these tests digitally so it's moving right along, and now we're testing for the speed of the capability of each of the pairs. So that, now that that's complete, it tells us to plug in the probe at the far end of the cable, and it tells us that the red light will come on when the test is done. Now, we happen to have the far end of the cable is right here, but this could be in a wiring closet some distance away, and you may have to be able to find that cable. So the first thing we do is that we place a tone on the cable to help us lo locate it in the wiring closet. Mm -hmm. And then once we've uh, uh, located the cable, now this, this uh, auto, audio probe is also the uh, test fixture for the far end of the cable and the little red light has come on to tell us that the test is complete and it also tells us a straight through cable. Now that that test is done, we can unplug the uh, probe. You know, Joe, I can't tell you how many calls I get with people uh, thanking us for putting that red lead there because they walk to the far end of the building and if it wasn't for the red lead, they'd have to leave the remote there, walk all the way back to the main unit, see if the test was done. Here we tell them right there in the remote area. The test is done. Simply unplug it, stick it in your pocket, and come back to the main unit. Well, that's where we've been very lucky. We've had a lot of customer uh, input because, you know, the customers realize that we're trying to uh, create a very cost-effective piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And they've been uh, uh, very good to help us uh, make these little features 
that have made a big difference to them. Sure. Because to them it's all about time. How do I save my time? How do I get the best out of my time? Yeah. So that was a suggestion from a customer. Mm -hmm. So there we are. We're done. Now we can take our probe, go back to the main unit. That's right. So now we go back to the main unit and we can see that this is a pretty good cable. It's, uh, 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 it's, a five, it's above a 5E cable. It's not quite a 6. And you can see that it's closer to the 6 than the 5E, so you know it's a pretty good cable. And of course we have PAST in big letters. Yeah. So you know right away that it's passed all the basic tests and here we give you your speed or your cable category. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is it's a graphics output, so if the customer wants to see this, it's in a form where the customer can understand it. Now, you know, we should point out here that a lot of the early real-world certifier customers are now seeing a totally different tester. Uh, in the early days, they would have seen screen after screen of data prior to coming to the cable category screen. But to speed things up, what we've done now is we've bypassed all of that. We haven't shown it to the customer unless they want to see it. If they want to see it, they have the choice to review it or save it in memory. So it's a big difference for our early customers. All right, and that was a, a input uh, from our customers. Right. They said that, look, if it's just passed, that's what I need to know. Right. All right. You now, if the customer uh, wants to uh, uh, review the data, he can. We allow him to review it, so he presses review, and the data is there. Sure. And then, he, you know, again, you, you see the screen where it gives you the cable type. It shows you that it's uh, capable of a, a, a gigabit, mm -hmm. and it's really good cable. So well, you can see that it, it, it's, it's far beyond yeah. the, 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 thousand, uh, the, the spec for a th uh, minimum spec for a thousand. All right, this is a 50-foot cable. And the uh, delay is 76 nanoseconds, and the skew is 5 nanoseconds, which is the difference in delay between pairs. Well, you know at this point I always like to grab the tablet, don't I? Now, I know customers don't use this tablet too much because they, they store their uh, results in memory and they print it out when they get back to their office on their computer's printer. But what's handy about this tablet is you could follow the screens and fill out the data if you wanted to give your customer a quick takeaway receipt for the work that you did per cable. Here you would fill in cable category by filling in the graph. Uh, you would fill in the predicted speed, uh, the cable length, but here's where we're at right now, the delay in the skew. You show the delay of the cable at 76 nanoseconds, the tablet says you've got 555 to play with. So right away we know we have a pretty good cable. You show the skew at being at 5 nanoseconds, and of course the standard allows for 50. So right away we can start sensing we have a good cable. Yes, and if we were out of spec, the um, meter would have immediately flagged the error. Okay. So now let's continue with our review. And here is a summary of all the tests that were performed. It says the delay, which is the time it takes the data to travel from one end of the cable, is okay. The skew, which is the difference in delay between pairs because data is sent on, all, uh, on several pairs at the same time mm -hmm. and the data all has to arrive at the receiving unit at the same time. If there's too much difference in time between pairs, then some of the data is going to be lost and there will be errors. All right, the next, which is the near-end crosstalk, uh, is the crosstalk between pairs. In other words, you put a signal on one pair and then you measure how much signal is on the other pair. And we do that digitally. And then on the uh, FEXT, which is the far end crosstalk, we measure the crosstalk on, from one pair to another, but on the far end of the cable. OK, we say the split pairs are OK. The map is OK. In other words, uh, it, it may be a straight through cable or it might be crossover cable, but it's one of the accepted configurations. It's a patch cable, and the tolerance is 87 percent. In other words, it's 87 percent uh, over the minimum spec for this cable. And you know, for uh, for uh, viewers that are are worried about writing down all these notes, 
uh, they can simply open up their manual and we've attempted in the manual to have a glossary of terms as you see them appear on the screen. So we talk about, well, length, what does length mean? What is propagation delay? What is skew? So we invite you uh, to read through the manual at your convenience and especially at the end here, I think, where we show you how to build a proper uh, cat uh, category 5E or 6 cable. That's right, Carol. And now we continue with our review and we can see the map. Now the map tells us where the uh, pairs on the near end connect to the pairs on the far end. In this case we see that pair 1, 2, in other words pin 1, 2 is connected to 1, 2 on the far side. 3, 6 on the near side is connected to 3, 6 on the far side. And it tells us that all the pairing is proper I mean, and there's no split pairs, no shorts, no opens. Now over here, it shows us the delay for each of the pairs. It shows us the skew, which is the difference. And you can see that uh, one pair is, of course, zero. One pair only has a one nanosecond uh, skew. One has three, and one has five. And now we're back to the beginning, which shows us that we have a very good uh, CAT5E cable. You know, we were talking about how with this tester in today's version that we are um, we're allowing the customer to skip all of this uh, primary data and uh, give them the choice to store it or not or review it and of course we've just reviewed it screen by screen but if the customer chose in the field not to review it instead to go back to their office and print it out what they get out get is a printout like this now I just want to cover up these bottom two graphs because these bottom two graphs have to do with level two testing and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Very good idea. We'll just we'll keep that secret for now. But for level one testing, exactly what we've accomplished on this 50-foot cable so far, this is what your printout looks like. Now this is a bit of a different cable. But you can see that all of the information that we went through is recreated on the graph, including all of the timing, the propagation delay, the skew, the wire map appears right here, and the cable category as it did appear on the tester in graphical form, along with the predicted speed of data through the cable. Now, this would have been stored in your tester. You get back to your office again. You import it into Excel and then you print out a spreadsheet and there's one spreadsheet per cable. Now, why don't we go on, instead of storing this, like most people would, and move on to the next cable, let's continue on with this test right into level two, Joe. And then... That's a good idea, Daryl. Now, of course, most people would be stopping at certifying the cable itself, but there are uh, those customers who want to uh, really see the, the cable working with their equipment. Okay. And uh, we can do that. So we, we just uh, move the cursor down to certify with port. And we select that. It tells us to uh, plug in uh, to the port. And it tells us that a gigabit port will certify at 10 meg, 100 meg, and a gigabit. Now, you know, I've been told this is what makes, this is one of the things that makes this unit so friendly. It might seem obvious that if you wanted to uh, connect a port and real world certify to a gig, that you need a gig device to do it. But let's say you only had a 100 megabit device. This is just reminding you that if you want a real world certify to a gig, you've got to have a gigabit device. Right. And so, uh, you know, but if the customer uh, has a gigabit port and he wants to certify to a gig, he can use his, uh, um, excuse me, his 100 megabit uh, port. Now let's go certify, all right, and now uh, it tells us we have to plug in the device. So we now plug into the port that we're trying to certify with. And you look at the screen here and it's starting to talk to that port and it's getting more and more information. Now here it is complete. It tells us that this port is capable of 10 megabit full duplex, 100 megabit full duplex, and a gigabit full duplex. 
You know, this is the kind of thing that really makes my eyes light up. I see so many people who are testing cables with this tester that look at it as a primarily a cable device, and then they get a screen like this that pops up, and they, they, you can actually go and read the link pulse of your network device and it'll tell you exactly what the capability of the device is. It's a strong feature, isn't it? In fact, some people just use this device for that feature. Right, and also cable pullers use it too because a lot of times you know, they'll do in their installation and then a few days later the customer calls up and says, I can't get my network going. It must be your cable. Right, exactly. You know, the cable guy is always the easiest guy to, yeah, first uh, to blame. To blame first to get the blame. So this way the cable guy, instead of having to go back there and install a second cable to find out the second cable works the same as the first cable did, he can plug into the customer's equipment and say, oh wait a minute, you're trying to run at a gig and that switch over there is only a hundred megabit switch. There you go. All right, or maybe the uh, a card in your PC is only a hundred megabit uh, uh, card. And then he doesn't have to go through all that trouble of, uh, of pulling another cable just to prove that the cable works. Mm -hmm. Now it shows us also that the uh, uh, por uh, port out there is, uh, has an auto MDI, MDI X. In other words, it can be either straight through or crossover. Make its own cable. That's right. And now here is a really big feature you can actually see the data levels on each of the four pairs. Yeah, look at that. Right. And this is uh, and it's a nice readable format. And over here we have a line across where it shows the minimum data level according to the spec. You know, and you made the point earlier, the poor cable guy getting blamed for a bad cable. Here you come along and you can actually see real live data coming out of the customer's own switch. See the signal levels of each pair clearly displayed plenty of signal there more than twice what you need that's right and, and it's a nice simple format so now this is something that he can talk to the customer with so let's say for example if these signal levels were just barely above minimum or maybe even a little bit below minimum he could tell the customer well it's not a cable problem it's uh, uh, you know your, your device uh, has a small signal level. Right. Uh, maybe you should get another one or maybe you need a repeater and then you can start talking about choices of, of what to do. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, we can... now this is a screen that I like a lot because this takes the summary of the cable test and the uh, data test and it combines them together in one screen and we can see is that this cable and that hub are, can run f uh, uh, well above uh, a gigabit mm -hmm. and there's a good margin for error so this is a sound good installation this cable and a uh, hub, hub together or, or switch are a good combination and we're going to have good results good reliable results you betcha and now we can now save the results now you get you really your second chance to save, right? We bypassed the first chance to save after level one because we didn't want to stop testing. Now we get our second chance to save at the end of level two. Right. Now we can save up to 250 readings and we can print them out later. Or sometimes, let's say if there's a marginal situation, you may want to talk to your supervisor who may be on the other side of the building doing a, a different part of the installation. You might say, hey, well, look at the data here, you know, the, this is pretty good, this is marginal, what should we do about this? Right, because you can look at it after you've stored it. <coughs> yes. Alright, now let's save the reading. Now if we look over here, it tells us, uh, you know, uh, to press select to save, so we just press select, and that was reading number nine. Number nine, so we have nine tests that are stored in memory, and now let's just go ahead and shut off the tester. We aren't going to lose our readings because they're stored in flash memory. In fact, you could even disconnect the battery from this thing and the readings are going to be there. That's right. And uh, we can now print out the readings or we can go back to, to the original menu and review the readings. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, the readings we took upstairs, we can take a look at those and talk to the customer and say, well, you know, 
reading number one and two were pretty good. Three is kind of marginal. Maybe mm -hmm. we ought to do a little more work there. Sure. Uh, maybe that's, uh, you know, you'd like us to install a new cable for that one. Five and six are okay. Ten through twenty uh, need new cable. You know, that kind of thing. So test nine was a level one and a level two test. That's right. So now we're going to pretend that this printout is that particular test and that we went back to the office imported it into Excel and printed it out. Now we can uncover the level two part of our printout. And as you can see, we're showing you a graphical display of the signal levels that you saw when you were running the test. Data signal levels, notice how we clearly label it port here, clearly label it uh, cable up here to differentiate between the cable test and the port test. And then this is the final speed prediction taking into account the capability of the port and the cable. Well we've, uh, we've covered a lot of ground in this video clip haven't we? Yes we have and I, I hope we uh, showed you the, the capability and how user friendly this is and how the graphics are, uh, really help you uh, bridge the gap between the installer and the customer because as you can see everything is simple and straightforward graphics really help you to be able to talk to your customer so that he understands the situation. You're not trying to snow him with a bunch of DB this and DB that. Very well said. Thank you, Joe.